In Africa, presidents are not challenged. The plans and development agenda of a president in Africa are never frustrated. In other words, you can never get away with those kinds of moves <laughs> against a presidency. And therefore, there are those who say Kenya is very unique and Kenya is very democratic for what is happening in the country to be happening. They say this is very good because it talks of a great democratic future for the country called Kenya. Because what is happening currently, they say, has never happened before. People challenging the presidency and nothing happens to them. But hold on a minute. Is it true that this has never happened before? Actually, no, it is not true. Believe it or not, it has happened more than once in the past. Now, before I go into details of exactly when it happened and how it happened, there are those who believe that actually there have been moves made against the deputy president. Yeah, and naturally this is very sensitive information. And it is included in the latest weekly intelligence briefings, number 43, yeah, which will be released in a few hours. In fact, chances are very high that by the time you take in this video, it will already be out. And so members, look out for that in your inboxes. If you're not yet a member, you're missing a lot. So use the email address you see on your screens right now to get payment details yeah, so that you can become a member immediately and catch up with these latest highly sensitive weekly intelligence briefings and all the other past weekly intelligence briefings and highly sensitive Club 1999 videos. Yeah, immediately become a member. You get all those very fascinating info that will give you a very clear, much clearer picture of exactly what Kenyan politics is all about. Now, in 1966, somebody was seen to be challenging President Jomo Kenyatta. Older Kenyans know that Jomo was ruthless and he never hesitated in taking swift action yeah, against those he liked to call being anti-development. In other words, and many will not agree with this, but in other words, in the president's view then, anybody who challenged him or criticized him yeah, was anti-development. <laughs> but guess what? Nothing happened to that person. Even when they went out and formed an opposition party to fight the government of Jomo Kenyatta, they were never bumped off. They were never assassinated. I'm of course talking about the first vice president of Kenya, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. Vice President Odinga had many similarities to our current Deputy President William Samuel Ruto. Odinga was the individual most responsible for making Jomo Kenyatta the first president of Kenya. Without Odinga, a Jomo Kenyatta presidency would not have happened. Very unlikely. Deputy President William Samoy Ruto is the person most responsible for making Uru Kenyatta president. Without Ruto's support, it would have been difficult. And most likely, it would never have happened. And politics is fascinating. Yeah, because Jaramugu Ginga Odinga didn't do it because of his love for Jomo. No. It is widely believed that he did it to block his rival, Tomboya, 
from ascending to the presidency. And in Ruto's case, there are those who believe that apart from fighting the ICC cases, the deputy president did it to block his rival, Raila Odinga, from the presidency. Now it is interesting in the 60s that people who are less of a threat to the Jomo Kenyatta presidency ended up six feet under, bumped off, but not Jaromogi. The worst that happened to him is that he was put under house arrest. His movements limited, yeah, but he remained very much alive. Fast forward to the 80s. Charles Mugane Njonjo was the individual most responsible for making Daniel Toretich Arab Moy Kenya's second president. He successfully fought off the powerful Kiambu Mafia yeah, and their plans to ensure that when Jomo passed on, one of their own would take over the presidency. So close was Njonjo to President Moy that in the early years, Njonjo rode inside the presidential limousine with the president, yeah, along with the other two individuals, the late Gigi Karaoke and the late Nicholas Kipiator be what? Now, traditionally, nobody is supposed to ride in the presidential limousine apart from the president's wife, the first lady. And this is probably why Kenyans nicknamed the three individuals who rode with Mo in his limousine his three wives. Now, Njonjo had built his networks over many years. His tentacles spread everywhere. His power and influence in Kenya was so great that it took a snap general election, yeah, which ensured the rigging out of all his allies. And several years after that snap general election of 1983, to rid the government of all significant influences of Charles Mugan and John John, this power and influence is very similar to the same power and influence the deputy president has built up yeah, or built up between 2013 and 2016 yeah, in anticipation of his ascension to the presidency later. Now, although Moy set up a commission of inquiry to investigate Charles Giorgio, but mainly to reveal the allegedly evil side of Giorgio to the public, yeah, although he did this, in the end, nothing happened to Njonjo. He received a presidential pardon yeah, and went to live quietly in retirement. Bottom line, what is currently happening with the deputy president is not unprecedented. And it would seem that if you are very powerful, and have tentacles all over the place, getting you out of government or getting rid of you becomes a very delicate matter. And past presidents have very consistently, as we have seen, decided to cut some slack yeah, to these former supporters of theirs who ended up challenging them for the presidency or challenging their policies yeah, and their agenda. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun. History keeps on repeating itself over and over again. And by carefully studying it, we can also be able to accurately predict what is going to happen in the future. Although in the case of Deputy President William Samuel Ruto, it is escalating, very much unlike the previous examples I've given you. Because Vice President Jaramogi Oginga Odinga went quietly, Charles Mugane Njonjo went out of government quietly. 
but William Samoy Ruto it appears is a whole different ball game make sure you catch my latest weekly intelligence briefings number 43 to find out exactly what i'm talking about details on your screen right now yeah when you send that email you get an automated email response giving you instant details for the rest of us i appreciate that many times people get so engrossed in my videos that they forget to like them please remember to like this video until next time this is chris kumekucha